First of all, welcome to, to Valencia, bienvenidos a Valencia. Uh, this presentation is going to be in, in English, so I will try to do my best. Um, I know that this is a, the last day of the conference, so I know most of us are very tired, so I will try to make as, as, many, as, as much as interactive as possible. So um, the title for this presentation is Removing Language Barriers for Spanish Speakers, Professionals, but the topic applies for any, any particular language. So I'm going to, um, in this presentation, I'm going to show uh, what we have been done in, in, in multiple um, areas or efforts that we have it. So coming from, from a place, from a country where English is not the, the first language, um, I know that it's tough for, for, for some professionals, especially for students, to start like uh, participating and interacting in all the technologies. So what we have been trying to do is create material, helping all of them, try to um, you know, provide uh, Kubernetes community days, uh, meetups, all those things in order to help them to, to, to be part of this, uh, this movement. So well, uh, who I am, um, I'm Victor Morales, I work for Samsung. I have been working for several open source projects like OpenStack, OpenNFB, ONAP, and now CNCF. Um, during all these years, I have learned a few things, and most of the open source uh, guidelines applies for all of these projects, and it is not a deception. So, um, and my partner in crime, which sadly could, he couldn't make it, is Israel. Israel is also, um, well, he works for, for Red Hat. All his information is here. So it's very approachable, and you can um, see him um, in all the the possible ways. I know that he he's, he would be happy to, to answer questions and try to help all of this. So, well, I'm going to start this presentation with this quote from uh, Nikita, so which is very important. Like uh, they told us multiple times, like uh, contributing to any open source project or of any particular com community is not only about like coding. So there are multiple ways, like you can um, like provide videos, like I mentioned, like <coughs> participating in, the, in the, the meetups. So, but I, something I like to highlight about this quote is, is helping. So, and helping has two, two ways, like, so it, one of the ways is like um, receiving um, the help from others, and the other one is providing help. So I'm going to try to cover like those, those those directions in, in the helping. Um, so I'm going to start receiving help. So for receiving help, we have plenty of resources. Like um, you can go to a Star Overflow, you can check that um, uh, topic, you can find a lot of answers and questions. So if you want to get deep on all this, uh, you can also go to the, to the um, projects, you can review the the PRs, you can try to find information, review the source code, you can do a lot of all these things. All the meetups, all the, all the community meetings are recorded and posted in the, in the, community, in the Kubernetes community uh, channel. So most of those resources, um, given that they have been published, it's pretty easy for, for students or for someone who is not speaking English to access them and, and take the time to translate them and, or using tools like Google Translator to, to, to understand what, what is happening. So another one's like, like Slack or, um, or participating in, in, the, in the community, like uh, attending the, the, the meetings, it's a little bit, a bit tough because yeah, you need that level of interaction. And the last, the last link here is, 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 is one, in, one of those which is very interesting is like, um, is, is, the Discuss um, Kubernetes I.O., which uh, we're, we have like a particular topic where you can ask all these questions in Spanish. In plain Spanish, you can ask them, um, I have this particular question regarding how to set up Kubernetes or like if I can use this setup or uh, using, um, I don't know, pod limits, things, things like that. So you, um, the idea is, uh, the, the idea that I tried to say here, like, so there is a plenty of materials, and also it's in Spanish. So I mentioned before, like Slack. So as le at least in, in, in Slack in Kubernetes, we have these two channels. Um, so where our 
Spanish speakers, like um, answering questions, and you can reach all of them and, and ask any question. You, you don't have to be, um, you don't have to explain all these questions in, in, in English. So someone is going to answer. Obviously, this is an, an open source project, so all the people who are there like are volunteers. So just be patient about that. So okay, but well, now that's that's one of the the, the, the the, the things that we are receiving help from from others so but the most important thing is like as I mentioned before uh, this community is um, is on top of uh, con contributors helping people from are helping others to to, to participate and, and respond in answers so what I'm going to dig now is in the process to contribute so it's returning back what we have received so what we use it, Mostly in the in our presentation is trying to explain how the um, Kubernetes working from top top to bottom. So we start like with these different groups. So basically we have the six, which are the special interest group. So basically there are multiple organizations working in a common project to a specific topic. So and we have the 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 working groups, which are more like a group of discussions. So for example, in my case, I participate in the CNF working group, where basically we discuss things like um, how to, what are the best practices for uh, defining uh, network functions, something very interesting for telcos. And also we have the user groups, which are like the, the place where like doesn't fit, that doesn't, the topics that doesn't fit on any of the previous ones, uh, most of them they are like treated in that way, in the public way, and the communities, where the communities is more like a close um, groups where like they discuss more sensitive uh, topics, which require a little bit the discussion of, of, of the, the, the topic. So just to be a, given an example or a picture of the different um, six uh, working groups that we have it, this is just a, a sample of, of all of them. And, and those are like in different categories, like, or like you can, uh, navigate or like take a look so but but there is a plenty of them I mean I, this is just just one one sample of all those things so as you can see like uh, the the sick docs is, is over there so basically they are focusing generate documentation and and the, the team in part which is part of the translation belongs to to that to that six so now that we know the different areas that where we can participate and we can contribute, so it's important to mention that there is like a, a contributor ladder. So um, obviously you can you can as I, as I mentioned before, so you can generate um, videos or you can participate in the meetups, uh, so you can be a speaker. All of these things and doesn't all of this participation doesn't require a, a, to sign something. But if you want to um, grow in, in, in your involvement in, in, in the open source, so there are different uh, stages where you can start. Like, a, for example, if you submit your patch, so you, can, you need to become a, a member. So eventually, if you participate more and more, um, you can start becoming reviewer, approver. So the idea is to encourage anyone just to not stay in there like, like an spectator, like going and taking more responsibilities in, in that particular uh, um, area. So, well, how can you start? Like, a, okay, I know that there is a different six, and my, my expertise maybe is in network or uh, in documentation. So what is next? What I have to do? So the first recommendation is, is just be an spectator, like just try to understand, attend the meetings, maybe, um, just ask few questions. Just try to be. Just try to be there. Like uh, I mean, it's not expecting. Just investing your time. Just trying to understand what is happening. So, and probably this is something that um, is, is very intimidating. But it is not. It is. This community is very welcome. So, I provide a few resources. I mean, in this case, it's the list of the. The six, 
Um, if you want to code, there are multiple um, libraries of Kubernetes, also there's a way to, to, to participate. And the interesting of this slide is, mess, is mainly that the last one, which described about the, 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 the non-code contributions, so which is one of, that I was mentioning before, like, um, like, like, like documentation. So there is also material, like um, especially the contribution experience SIG, which is, um, has been developed a lot of information about the process and all the best practices and the steps that you have to follow. There are videos regarding that. But one other important thing is like mentorship. So if you, and probably it, it is something that as a, as a Latin Americans, maybe we don't have like a, a culture, part of the culture that, that there is a mentorship program that you can access to them, you can raise your hand and you can ask for, for that to participate in this. So if you know about this, uh, it's, it's totally free and, and it, it and you doesn't require too much to, to, to be there. So what else? Um, again, I mean, we're still in the discovering phase. Like, um, so in, in this phase, is what is the recommendation? Going in the, in the issues, try to look for something like um, with that particular labels. Um, so for example, help is needed or uh, first, first issue. So most of the time, like maintainers are trying to um, require help, so they try to um, catalog some of the issues with those particular labels in order to, to be easier for newbies to, to participate and, and to contribute. And also it's a good source for, for uh, mentors to, to help mentees to, 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 to address all these questions. So if, if you are shy like, and you don't want to have a mentor or for any case, so that's another way to, that you have to do it. Um, and read the docs. So we have docs, we have docs. So um, there is a lot of documentation. So um, don't be sh take your time, read the documentation. They haven't spent a lot of time producing all this, this documentation. So, and the positive thing, I mean, if you discover that something is missing, maybe it's, it's time to propose a, a change or su submit a, like a, a particular topic. And documentation is a great way to, to start. Like. And now, regarding the different languages, okay, well, we have the documentation. We, we are, in this particular case, we are talking about how to translate things uh, from English to different languages. So, in the particular case for the Kubernetes documentation, there is like a, from the Slack perspective, we have a lot of uh, channels. So in this case, we are the second one, the Kubernetes Docs X. So, and mainly the idea of this, this particular group is, is to try to translate the previous documentation that I mentioned in, 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 in Spanish. So uh, we, ha we need a lot of people. Uh, the documentation is constantly evolving. And also it's a good way to start like uh, getting involved in open source because as you're going to see later, the, the the contribution process is pretty much the same like uh, any other any other change that we had to submit so so well this is also another few links that we have it so we we we, we have PRs we have um, a slack channel and so it's clear I, this is more like a call for action to participate in all, all of these things um, so there are, there are four things that you have to keep in mind when you are going to try to um, participate in the translation. So the first one is very obviously because um, you have to sign the, the, CLA, the CLI. So the CLI, uh, there are basically two types. You, you, you have to sign as an individual or as a part of the corporation. So don't feel overwhelmed. It's, it's just part of the process. It's, it's nothing that protecting the, 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 the source code. Um, you can read all the CLI. Um, it's just one step. It, it, the process is quite simple. So the, the other thing is like, especially in the Kubernetes um, 
in the Kubernetes documentation um, website, you require to at least to understand a little bit Go, uh, Ugo, sorry. Um, Ugo is the platform that is used to generate the HTML. So the documentation is written in Markdown. So Ugo is like the tool that we are using to deploy um, the website. So this is just to know in the tooling. It's not mandatory to know Ugo or to deploy it or to use it, but it, it, it's good to have it. It's good to have it, um, at least that idea. Uh, obviously, a little bit con uh, understanding about Git and GitHub, so it's very well uh, to have it. And you will require to have a, at least a GitHub account, so without all of this is not possible. And the other tool that I want to also mention is Netlify. Um, it's, it's, it's not important that you know or to understand what is happening, but uh, it's good to know that that it is used during the process, and, and you're, you're going to see the, the impact that has in, in, in all this its contribution. So, well, let's go through the steps to, to contribute to the documentation. So the first thing that you have to do, as on most of the GitHub projects, so you have to do a fork. So what, what a fork means is just basically creating a copy from the, the main, um, project into your own account. So in this case, uh, what we are going to fork is like the Kubernetes website. So we're creating a, um, a copy in our own account. And this diagram is showing like the, the workflow that, that most of us or maybe you haven't seen before. So basically what you have to do, you have to clone your changes in your local computer. So in this case, a website, you clone it locally. So you start working the translation. I mean, it doesn't care if you start like using translator to translation tools, as long as you read it and you make sure that everything is covered. So uh, you have to create a branch locally, submit or create your commit and your own branch, push your, your branch in your fork um, cop or copy of the project, and from there, you have to do a pull request. So usually that's the, the workflow that, that you have to do. What we have been created is uh, we have created an issue in order to avoid two people working the same concept or the same page. So that's the, the way that we used to coordinate efforts. So before doing all these things, I encourage to you to, to raise your hand and say, well, I want to work in these particular volumes or in storage on any particular topic. In that way, we are going to make sure that no one is translating exactly the same, the same website. Um, so after you made the, the pull request, feedback is, is a start, especially um, for, for reviewers. So any, any, any feedback that you receive, you have to like going through, through the same process. So maybe create a new commit in your, uh, in your copy, submit to your own uh, account. As long as you keep the PR open, all these changes are going to be reflected. So don't frustrate because um, we are humans, we take time to review the things, and, and, and obviously everybody has their own uh, priorities and, 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 and a scale. So, so don't rush and don't try to push uh, reviewers to, to, push, to, to, to push your change um, to, to, to main. So again, per, pretty much explain a bit the, the, the process. This is just using the command line if you prefer it. So as you can see, in this case there, Rael was doing like a, cl a clone from the website repo. So as you notice here, from Rael is doing a clone from his own copy. So in that, in that way, the pointer that you have to origin is, is his, his own account. So he started like doing the translation. Um, he created a, a branch. In this case, he's, he's creating a local branch. 
he started working and probably translate something. Normal, regular um, development process, changes, add those changes, um, make a commit. Um, there are multiple best practices for doing like a, a commit message well known. So I also encourage to, to take a look. So once that you have all these things, uh, this is something personal. I prefer like to test things locally. In this case, you can install Ugo if you don't have it. I mentioned before Ugo. Ugo is like a tool for deploying. So all these instructions are like just a way to, to test all these things. I mean, I, I say that it's not mandatory to do, to do all these things, but it is, it is better if you make sure that everything is working. So um, if Ugo is not installed, you can use Salad. And by the way, um, there are some make instructions. So we have tried to simplify the process to, to deploy things locally. So once that you deploy things, you can verify that your translation, the, the, the portion that you have translated, it is there. If everything is OK, so far so good. So you, you can push your changes to your, your own branch in your repo and and from there you create a, the pull request so um, explain it twice <laughs> so this is a, the most common error that you can see especially for first uh, contributors so what you mean is like um, that you haven't signed the the ci cla sorry so and um, it's very simple so you only have to do click one click so that is going to redirect to the to the website so from that website, you have to read the, the, the CLI. I, I mentioned two types, like individual contributor or like from corporation. Once that everything's go, once that you have signed the the CLI, the 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 CI process is going to trigger. So, and the most important thing is here is is regarding the the last step regarding um, Netify. So. Why is this important? Because, well, before going, going, going that, most of the reviewers are not going to um, take a look at your change if everything is green. So, so make sure that everything is passing. Once it is passing, the reviewers are going to start like taking a look because that's the, way, the, the, way, the one way to avoid wasting time. So the last step is regarding Netify. So with Netify, you, what you can do is you can check the, or take a look of the preview of your change in a public uh, accessible website. So again, it's just making sure that all the changes are there, everything is working as expected. So, and the process is started. So as a, a reviewers, we check the, the, the PR, we comment, we make suggestions. So back and forth, changes. The last thing, um, we put multiple levels. In this case, a GTM, which means looks good to me. So usually we require like a multiple reviewers to take a look and give and put those labels. So once that everything is good, we have multiple people who has reviewed your change. It is approved. The 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 PR is approved, which means it's, it's triggering more. Um, more processes, and finally is merge, which which means is your change is going to be part of the Kubernetes main uh, branch, and obviously those changes are going to be deployed in in production. So, so your changes, what you have translated, is going to be uh, as part of the main website. So, the last thing that I want to just Talk about this an our translation initiative that we have it. So this is more oriented to CNCF. Um, so basically, we have two resources, <laughs> or in this case, uh, the Slack where we you can access to or connect contact to, uh, to us, and the calendar. Our weekly meetings are in Tuesdays, so it's 15:30 UTC. So so. And we have two main 
other initiatives or, 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 or documents that we are uh, trying to translate. The first one is regarding security. In this case, Carol is leading this effort. She is uh, proposing, and this is not following the previous process. This is mainly a, a, a Google Docs web uh, document where people are putting the translation and saying all these things. And the other one is a recent one. Uh, the CNCF has a glossary. So, and in this glossary, um, basically we have multiple terms where we try to explain with a sim single words the several concepts like DevOps uh, or containers or things like that. So this is also a good project or a good way to start like contributing and, and participating in the, the, the translation. So we also provide the, the, the links for, for this um, in case that you want to, to contribute. Any contribution is welcome. So, and I guess all of this is done. So thanks. So. So any any question? Any? So is there going to? English or Spanish? I think it's going to be in English. Because English? Okay. Yeah, so in your opinion, to be a, a good contributor, uh, what is the time commitment uh, for it? Like we have families, we have jobs. Well, yeah, it's kind of a tricky question. Um, so probably my suggestion is um, make sure that whatever that is your cadence or your piece, you can keep it because I noticed that you know, a lot of energy, people try to contribute. They, the first few um, weeks, they, they're very happy with the contribution. But this is, this is like a, this is not a race, this is a marathon. So, so find that cadence that you have it. Like maybe choose, pick one day, maybe Fridays, Mondays, <laughs> whatever that works for you. and and just book that particular day. So the important thing here is like, because you have to demonstrate your commitment. So no one in any open source community wants to see someone who trolls the source code and leave it. Even if the code is amazing, so, so what they want to see is commitment. So because if something is broken, who is going to fix it? So, um, so that's probably my recommendation, just choose Whatever that works for you. Thinking about like um, a roadmap from two two years or something like that. So, um, so you would think like two two hours a week, uh, one full day a week. Yeah, probably maybe one or two hours per day. You can start with that one. So as long as you can see, maybe you can increase the time and say, well, maybe I can I can spend more time on on, on this. So. And also the, the idea of documentation is, as I said before, like this is a very low entry level. So, so this opens the opportunity for like, once that you manage all these things, like starting contributing to, to the, the client or like the, 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 the different components are going to be very easy because at least you, you manage the basics. Thank you. So, of course, I encourage you to, to join to the, uh, to the channel, uh, participate in this, and try to at least work together as a community. Uh, we struggle with trying to find volunteers, so it's, it's always like a welcome to have extra hands on, on this. And I will be around like uh, for any any other thing. So thank you.